In part two of the demonstration, we're going to finish off the outsole with the heel area and the toe area. So since the first demonstration we start off with surfaces and convert them into solids, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to start off with solids this time. So first we're just going to extrude that green shape that you've seen out a given distance. Next we can quickly cut away a shape designated by the green dotted area. You can also add draft to this. In this case there's a 15 degree draft added to it. So it automatically does the cut plus the draft in one shot. Next we want it to match the shape of the midsole. So using some offset surfaces we can trim away that shape with the green and magenta surfaces. Keeping only the area that we need. Again, this is much quicker than sitting there trimming all your surfaces one by one. You can quickly utilize the solids and surface features all in one shot. Now that we've done that, let's add a fill it to the inside of the part. Again, like before, you have to do is select one area and automatically add the filling across the entire edge. Let's also add a cut through it. So let's select the model and that oval shape. The curve does not lie, have to lie on any of the surfaces, it automatically cuts based on view. Now that we have the basic shape of the heel outsole done, what we want to do is take that shape away or subtract it away from the midsole. So we can quickly go in and say select the midsole, select the shape we want to subtract from it, and make the cuts the shape away. This does not, although, remove the heel area. Now let's add a couple more fillets to finish off that portion. Now to finish off the design, let's say we want to add a couple lugs or spikes in the back. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to unstitch a portion of the solid. You'll see it turning red. So now that is a surface independent from the solid. And we'll quickly cut away the oval shapes from it. Now again, if you look at the oval shapes, they do not have to lie on the surface. It's cutting based on view. Now we can do is we can use the covering command to finish those areas off. And before we used it in the first demo, we're just selecting certain edges. This time we're selecting edges and we're also selecting points. The first part is non-tangent, meaning it's going to make it non-tangent to the edge and it's going to go through that point. You can see it's more of a domed effect. Now on the right hand side what we'll do is we'll select the same area but this time we'll make it tangent and also select the center point. This time what it does is it makes it tangent as it goes through the point also. Same shape, two different effects. And let's finish off the back area using the same command. Now that we've got that portion done, let's stitch everything back into one solid. Now that we have the back portion of the model done, let's concentrate on the heel area or the toe area.
the tower area we're going to use a slightly different approach. What we have here is we have an area that was basically cut away from the original midsole, so it's got the same shape to it, it's independent surfaces. We're going to first stitch them into a solid again. And then we're going to offset those surfaces. Now the difference here is that opposed to offsetting just surfaces is that it not only gives you the offset, but it also creates all the surfaces in between, the faces in between the outside and the inside skin, all in one shot. Now let's add some lugs to the front area. In this case, we're going to use a basic shape, and we want it to follow along that dotted line that you see. We're going to use a pattern command. There's multiple different ways to use pattern. In this case, we're going to have it follow along a curve. Select the amount of patterns that you want, and the pattern that you want to use, and the curve that you want to follow, and select the center point to start. What this will do is builds, in this case, eight copies of that. Follows the curve, follows the curve normal, and also the binormal. So if you look at the side view, you can see it curls up along the front of the toe. Now what we're going to do, since those protrude beyond the toe area, we're going to pick them and cut them away from the gray area, keeping the bottom portion of it. You can see that the inside is now gone. Next step to this, of course, is union them or boiling them together, making them one object. Now let's say another way of building the some lugs for the outsole. We're going to use the prune and graft functions in Key Creator. The prune function you can either cut away or copy different types of features, whether they're bumps, bosses, ribs. In this case, we're going to select the lug, and when you copy it, you'll see it turn red. And just so you can see the Caesar, we're going to move it away, and we're going to change its shape a little bit. See now an exact copy of it was cut away from the model. Now let's take that modified lug and graft it back onto the model. Now you can either paste or you can cut away from the model. like the point you want to start from and you can see the handles on the screen those you can move them in XYZ you can rotate them around or you can actually input explicit dimensions that you want it to move it to XYZ coordinates and this again is all dynamic when you have it where you want it just a matter of executing it it automatically becomes part of the model or graphs it onto the model Let's do the same thing, and this time we're going to prune that new shape we just attached to it. And let's grab that shape now onto the front area. So now we've seen different ways of creating lugs, either in the back, in the heel area, using the covering command or here using the pattern and then the prune and graft commands so now we have the midsole done in blue and we have the heel area in gray and the toe area done in gray also using hybrid approach, using surfaces and solids.